Uh, we're sitting here at the Leather Club at APLF 2015 and um, I'm with Martin Mengele who's uh, the uh, Senior Director of Material Sourcing Footwear at Adidas. Thank you for your time uh, for this brief interview, uh, Martin. Um, just some basic questions about how you go about sourcing leather for your product line at Adidas. What's the first step? Well, the first step for us, uh, I would say, comes into the qualification of the tanneries that we're going to work with. Mm -hmm. So before we start developing leathers or seeking out leathers, uh, you know, we have a set of basic requirements for our tanneries to comply with related to the leather working group, related to sustainability requirements, related to social and environmental affairs. Um, so that's really the first step for us is to qualify the tannery as a supplier for Adidas. And then we go into a seasonal development process where the tanneries uh, usually come to our headquarters, work with our designers, show them their line. Maybe there's some you know, back and forth input into what the designers are looking for. And that process covers the vast majority of our, of our line and our leather developments. We also have part of our leathers that will be sourced from uh, through the fairs, through uh, an event like APLF or Linnea mm -hmm. Pele, where our designers might go and see some more specialty unique leathers from different tanners that might not be currently part of our portfolio and then we might have to see about bringing them in as a supplier for us as well. Yeah, yes, you, you, you mentioned when you, um, let's say, pre-qualified tanneries, the, you mentioned the leather working group. Is it a prerequisite for you to use a tannery that has obtained um, a certain standard within the uh, leather working group classification or not? It's our goal that uh, all of our tanneries should be part of the leather working group program and uh, we try to ensure a minimum of a silver rating, but uh, push for a gold as much as possible. And we've been quite successful in seeing the vast majority of our uh, tanneries uh, achieving very high uh, audit results in the... Yeah, yeah, because the leather working groups in a lot of, uh, well, has really been active in the last four to five years especially. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were a founding member and have been part of the program uh, for a number of years and uh, very pleased with the results that that's delivered. Uh, going, going, going back a little bit further before you actually uh, choose the leather, um, is there a case to say that uh, Adidas products, whether it be, let's say, running shoes or, uh, or um, leisure shoes or football boots, if you can use that phrase, are these designer driven in the sense that the designer will recommend the sort of um, uh, material you, you need to use? Or, 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 or do, do you... Do you um, um, have a limit because you've got X number of pre-qualified tanneries. I'm not sure I follow well, 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 if, 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 for example, a designer, um, a designer designs um, a new running shoe, for example, yeah. will they recommend the sort of leather you should use in the shoe or does someone else de decide that? It depends a lot on the application. Um, when we're dealing with uh, performance products, there's more requirements that go into it. Mm -hmm. If it's a, a lifestyle product, then um, we're usually a little more flexible to follow the, the direction from the designer to give them the look that they're after. Mm -hmm. But um, it's always a, a collaborative effort between a designer uh, looking for a specific appearance to the product uh, with product development experts who yeah. then support them to ensure that the function is uh, is met and then that's uh, also there's a collaboration with the shoe factories to ensure that that uh, whatever they've designed in is manufacturable yeah okay um, as you know in uh, in the last oof, I guess since 2009 leather price have been surging ahead Really? I didn't notice. No, really? <laughs> yeah, they peaked about last September, I understand. Yeah, you uh, said 2009. I had a lot more hair uh, before that <laughs> happened. No. <laughs> um, did, um, has the, has the, the, you know, this consistent rise in leather price from about $30 up to over 100 now, um, has that um, 
cause you to specify less leather in your products? Have you been favouring, let's say, more synthetics, you know, on the basis that they're more performance oriented or? Uh, we have definitely seen an impact uh, from the high prices of leather into a reduction in the volume of leather we use. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a shift from full grains into splits and there's also been an overall reduction in the quantity of leather that we're using as a group. So we do see that. I mean, most of that has shifted uh, into, uh, into textiles and into some synthetic uh, materials. The, um, on the question of sustainability in, in terms of the production process and the, um, and the, the materials you, 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 you use, we you under a lot of pressure after the... Um, after the Greenpeace um, uh, destroying the Amazon video to, to actually look more carefully at that because it did cause, um, to, for the want of a better word, quite a hoo-ha when it came out, if you recall. You know, we, we've always had a very active uh, focus on the sustainability of our products, um, but we did take a more uh, in-depth look at the origin of the raw materials that we're using following the, the Greenpeace report. And, uh, you know, I think we're very pleased with the efforts that have come into traceability uh, of the raw material in Brazil since then and, and believe that, uh, yeah, it's been a, a strong industry-wide effort to, to drive the traceability of raw material um, and, and, and improve that area. Since yeah, do, do you act, act, actively use traceability uh, when you're sourcing from Brazil, for example? You know, you, you, you anticipate my next question, in fact. Do you actually uh, you use the traceability um, programs available? You know, um, some of you know so the larger tanners are obviously using this. Yeah, we 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 know that traceability is uh, part of the leather working group rating, mm -hmm. and so we monitor it through through that avenue, and mm -hmm. we rely on. I mean, the the material that we source from Brazil origin is limited to a few large players where we. We know we have confidence in working with them that they're also ensuring that the raw material that they source is not coming from the Amazon region. Moving away from, let's say, production to, towards the um, end consumer now, when the end consumer goes to buy an Adidas pro product, have you done any surveys, for example, to know if the consumer is demanding a sustainable product from your, um, from your, from your uh, production uh, line? You know, is, is there more awareness about sustainability now, or do you believe, as Leather Naturally um, uh, says, that we need to educate the consumer more? We believe that the consumers are much more aware now, the younger generation, and we look at our target consumer being in the 14 to 19 year old age range. The millennium. So we're, we're millennium, definitely looking yeah. at younger consumers mm -hmm. who are certainly much more aware of it. But what we see from them is that they, they don't look towards sustainability as something that we should uh, tell them as a, as a special feature. It's a basic expectation. They're just, they're assuming that as a good corporate citizen, we are taking care of efforts in that area. And so, you know, for us, it, uh, it should be a basic part of what we do and a core part of our product and not something that we try to sell as a special feature. Yeah, yeah it's, well, it's a real advance if there's that awareness in the, uh, in, in, in the, in, in the uh, target group you're talking about, you know, it really, it really is. Um, what, one, 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 fi one final question, um, you know, Mike asked this question, how do you th see things in the next few years? Are, are we all going to lose more hair or...? <laughs> or, or, or? Well, you know, I think what, what we said before is that there's, uh, there's going to be two key issues that we will continue to work with in the coming years. And certainly challenges with raw material I don't expect to go away. Um, we're in a, you know, in a period where a lot of the uh, challenges that we face with raw material are driven by uh, natural factors yes. of droughts and, you know, uh, and, and that uh, is likely to continue in the coming years. So I think raw material continues to be a challenge. Um, and then the requirements that we're going to be, you know, putting onto the tanneries in particular in chemical management and effluent management mm -hmm. and their disclosure of those uh, factors in their production are going to accelerate. So there's going to be more activity with the tanneries working with them on, on how they manage their, their chemical usage and mm -hmm. um, potentially on, on working with them to phase out certain 
uh, hazardous chemicals that are, are used in the production process, mm -hmm. as well as the disclosure of their effluent content and uh, more open uh, discussion about what is being put into the environment out of the tanneries. Yeah. So we'll see that uh, becoming... Yeah, do, uh, do you have to actively make any um, recommendations to chemical uh, suppliers or not? Uh, currently we don't, uh, you know, we don't qualify chemicals that go into the tanning process. Our current focus has always been on the restricted substance management and testing the finished product. Yeah. Um, we are seeing that shifting more into input control and input management. Okay. And so um, whether that takes the, the, the form of telling the tanneries what chemicals are okay to use, I don't think we'll get there necessarily with leather specifically. Um, in textiles, we, we work with Blue Sign and we use their Blue Finder tool mm -hmm. to qualify chemicals that, that can be used in the dyeing process. Mm -hmm. With leather tanning, uh, it's not, there's no industry kind of accepted uh, norm for that right now. So I think we're, we're more looking at if there are specific chemicals that we need to eliminate, then we work on the elimination of those rather than uh, actually as a brand trying to qualify what inputs the tanneries should use. Okay, well that's great, Martin. Thanks for your time and um, interesting interview from my point of view. Thank you, it's my All pleasure to be here. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you.